I'd like to introduce another useful quantity about waves called the phase. A phase is a way of shifting a wave back and forth. So here's a graph of a wave. It happens to be a sine wave uh, blotted along the x-axis. It has a wavelength of lambda, and we can assume that this thing is graphed. Uh, this is a y of x and t is sine kx minus omega t, uh, plotted at some time t equals 0. And notice that it has a value of x equals 0 and uh, y equals 0. In other words, it starts out at the origin. But sometimes I want to be able to shift this wave so that it has different initial conditions at time t equals 0 and x equals 0. This is done in mathematics by adding what's called a, wave, a phase shift phi. So I simply add it to the argument of the sine function, or subtract it in this case. What does this phi do? Well, the bigger the value of phi, the more it shifts the graph of a sine wave to the right. How do you see this intuitively? Well, let's keep imagining that time equals zero. If phi equals zero, the value of x has to be positive in order to have the argument of the sine be equal to zero. Ordinarily, with no phase, that would occur if x equals zero, but now I need a positive number in there for x in order to cancel out everything inside the argument. Here's some examples. Let's suppose phi is pi over two. This means we get the argument kx minus phi equal to zero whenever kx is equal to pi over two, or x is equal to lambda over 4. Let's suppose phi is equal to pi. This means we get the argument of the sine function to be equal to 0 whenever x is equal to lambda over 2. Or let's suppose phi is equal to 3 pi over 2. That means I get the argument of the sine function to equal 0 whenever x is equal to 3 lambda over 4, and that's how much I'm going to shift my wave, 3 lambda over 4 or 2 pi, that means I'm going to shift the wave by x equals lambda. If I think about the phase shift this way, the phase shift is a number between 0 and 2 pi. 2 pi corresponds to one full revolution in a, in a circular orbit. That also corresponds to one full wavelength in the evolution of this traveling wave. So as big a fraction of 2 pi that phi is, we want to shift the wave over by a fraction of lambda. If we think back to this, pi over 2 was a quarter of 2 pi. It's a quarter of one revolution. And we shifted our wave over by a quarter of lambda. Phi equals pi is half of a revolution. And therefore, we switched our wave over by half of a lambda. Phi equals 2 pi is one full revolution, and we moved our wavelength over by one full lambda. So as big as phi is to 2 pi, you shift your wave over by a fraction of a wave, the corresponding fraction of a wavelength. That's what a phase shift does. It just moves the initial conditions over. It shifts the entire wavefront over. There's lambda over 4, there's lambda over 2, there's 3 lambda over 4, and there's lambda. That's how much we shifted each of those waves. Now, how do we see this for the initial conditions? Well, let's now think again at time t equals 0 and imagine what's happening at the origin. At time t equals 0, we have y of x and 0 is a sine kx minus phi. When x equals 0, this becomes y of 0 and 0 is sine of minus phi. Let's take some examples. For phi is pi over 2, then I have sine of excuse me, a times the sine of minus pi over 2, or minus a. And indeed, my, sh my wave shifted over by a quarter of a wavelength now continues on down to be at the minus a location. For phi equals pi, then my y of 0 and 0 equals a times sine of minus pi, but sine of pi is 0. And indeed, if I look at my wave uh, front shifted over by lambda over 2, when I extend it back to the origin, it hits the origin, so it's actually at zero amplitude. When I think of phi as 3 pi over 2, that's 3 quarters of a wavelength shifted over on the purple graph here, I stick in a of sine of minus 3 pi over 2, but sine of minus 3 pi over 2 is, means I'm going clockwise on the unit circle by 3 pi over 2, which is the same as going counterclockwise by pi over 2. 
that just means I have sine of th minus 3 pi over 2 is 1, or the wave function is A, capital A. And indeed, if I take this wave function, the purple one that's been shifted by 3 lambda over 4, and extend it back to the origin, I get that y is plus a. And for phi is equal to 2 pi, I have sine of minus 2 pi, which is 0. And indeed, the wave function has been shifted over by one full wavelength that formerly started at the origin still starts at the origin. So another way of thinking about this phase shift is a way of shifting what initial conditions you want. We could talk about this in terms of oscillators. Instead of having a mass on a spring that starts out at the origin and you ping it, you have a mass on the spring that you start out pulling out at some distance and then you let go. You want the coordinate to be uh, initially large or you want the coordinate to be uh, initially small. In terms of waves on a string, I could think about I would like to either have the string out of the, at its rest position and I whack it, or I slowly draw the, the string out to some extreme place and then I let go. That's a way of, I could do those things by setting the phase shift properly.